back to Yamamoto, I find him such an interesting topic, right? Because we talk so much about risk. He hasn't pitched on U.S. soil. He's coming over from a different league. But what's fascinating to me, Joe, is that I would counter argue that the risk with Yamamoto is the same as any other typical free agent because he's 25, where a lot of pitchers that get to free agency are at least 30, that they could be on the wrong side after a year or two where their arm starts breaking down, where, yes, there's performance risk with Yamamoto, but you are getting a guy that hasn't even entered his prime as a pitcher yet, where if you want to be paying somebody... I mean, wow, what is he going to get? It's going to go to 200 mil. We know that. I'm trying to think annual average here, Joe. Is I he mean, gonna is he going to touch 30 seven, mil a year? Seven, eight years, 200 mil-ish. Like, it's going to be a long-term deal. I'm sure there'll be an opt-out in there or something because that's right. like Senga, Senga has an opt-out in his deal after year three, I think. Uh, but it's going to be a lot of money. That's what it comes down to. Right. But I, I think that on top of all that, me thinking the risk is actually the same as any free agent because he has some a, he has something in his pocket that not a lot of guys have. He's a 25-year-old superstar free agent. That is very, very unique. As a pitcher, a position in sport that breaks down really like no other.